Hello. In this video, we'll be giving an overview of the capabilities of the Open PBR Surface shading model. With Open PBR Surface, a wide range of materials can be created using a variety of software packages. These include plastics, subsurface scattering effects such as skin and wax, different metallic effects, and transparent plastic and glass materials. It is available within all Arnold plugins, as well as other DCCs and renderers, including Adobe Substance, Houdini Karma, and Redshift. It is also available in any tool fully supporting the latest version of Material X, and there is broad support from other vendors. This model is an evolution of the popular Autodesk standard surface model, incorporating improvements from several other models, such as Adobe Standard Material. It builds on top of these production proven models, but also includes several important enhancements and updates. So let's dive into the details of this powerful model. It is based on a physical material structure that has proved to be very useful in visual effects and games production. It consists of a number of layers of material on top of a base substrate, representing the bulk of the material. This base is either metallic or dielectric, or a blend between the two controlled by the base metalness parameter. If metallic, that is with base metalness 1, the surface is opaque and has the characteristic appearance of a metal such as gold or aluminium with strong specular highlights. If dielectric, that is with base metalness 0, the surface becomes diffuse due to internal scattering. The dielectric can also be transparent. This can be useful for materials such as skin, plastic, glass, or wood. These two modes can be blended between using an intermediate base metalness, for example, to model a rusty metal. Here we've used a texture map to make the rust diffuse. Now let's focus separately on the pure metallic or dielectric cases. First, when base metalness is one, the surface is purely metallic. In this case, the base colour controls the observed colour of the metal seen straight on. This is often referred to as F0, meaning the Fresnel reflectance when viewed straight on. For example, the F0 colour is yellowish for gold or grey for chromium. The specular colour separately controls the colour seen near the silhouette of metals, often referred to as the F82 colour, meaning the Fresnel reflectance viewed near grazing angles. In real metals, the F82 colour tends to darken or change hue. For example, as can be seen here, chrome has a slightly blue tint at the edge. F0 and F82 values are available in the Arnold documentation for a suite of commonly used metals. The specular weight functions as an overall multiplier of the strength of the metallic reflection. Now let's turn to the dielectric case, where base metalness is zero. In this case, the surface may transmit light with optional scattering in the interior. This has three components, the translucent base, the subsurface, and the diffuse base. Let's look at the diffuse case first, which is the default. When the transmission weight is zero, which is the default, the base is a completely opaque dielectric with a dense internal scattering medium. If subsurface weight is zero, this produces a diffuse reflection, which models the appearance of familiar non-metallic opaque materials, such as hard plastic, wood, concrete, cardboard, and wall paint. A bright reflection from the dielectric surface is superimposed with the diffuse reflection from the internal scattering. The strength of the reflection is again controlled by specular weight. OpenBBR introduced a new form of diffuse roughness called the EON model, which better preserves energy enhancing the appearance of rough diffuse materials. The look at the diffuse reflection can be further modified using base diffuse roughness. At high values, this models the flat, dusty appearance characteristic of real diffuse surfaces. Now let's look at the subsurface case. If subsurface weight is dialed to one, with the transmission weight zero, this models an internal scattering medium, which is very dense but still transmit some light after internal subsurface scattering. This is important for the rendering of translucent materials, 
such as marble, plastic, skin, food and vegetation. The main controls in this case are the subsurface colour, which controls the observed hue of the material after scattering, and the subsurface radius, which controls roughly the distance that light bleeds. The higher this radius, the more translucent the material. The subsurface radius scale gives further control over the distance that each individual colour channel travels. So for example in skin, red light travels further, which is modelled by setting subsurface radius scale to a pinkish tone. For example, an earlobe with subsurface scattering going red, a subsurface radius scale is dialed from white to pink. The subsurface radius scale defaults to a colour which gives a rayly scattering look with slightly blue scattering and orange transmission, similar to milk or wax. The subsurface anisotropy controls whether the scattering is preferentially forwards when set to 1 or backwards when set to 0. Forward scattering produces a more translucent look and a stronger silver lining effect as the light is able to travel further. Now on to transmission. When transmission weight is 1, the base metal is 0, the surface becomes transparent, although there may still be some internal absorption and scattering as well optionally. Turning on transmission weight makes the base a clear dielectric, such as glass or transparent plastic. In the transmissive case, the effect of specular IOR is quite strong, as it affects the bending angle of the light due to refraction as it enters and exits the dielectric. The look of the material varies considerably as the IOR is varied. In the transmissive mode, the material also supports an internal volume, though it's designed to be more suitable for a less dense medium than the subsurface model. The transmission colour controls the so-called Beer's Law absorption, tinting the colour of the transmitted light with deeper colours in thicker areas. The transmission depth Similar to subsurface radius, defines the distance which light travels inside the material before being absorbed or scattered. The higher the transmission depth, the more translucent the material, similar to subsurface radius. Transmission scatter is useful for translucent materials with visually significant scattering, such as honey, fruit juice or murky water. Transmission dispersion is ideal for gemstone materials like diamond. Dispersion means there is variation of the IOR with wavelength, which produces subtle rainbow colours adding realism. This variation is controlled by the physical Abbey number parameter. For glass and minerals, the Abbey number is typically in the range of 10 to 70, with lower numbers giving more dispersion. The default value is 20, a mid-range value. The transmission dispersion scale provides a convenient 0 to 1 slider for the strength of the dispersion, given the current Abbe number. Note that the transmission dispersion scale defaults to zero, which turns off dispersion. In both the metal and dielectric cases, the surface appearance is strongly affected by the roughness properties. This controls the bumpiness of the surface, which makes light scatter in different directions and gives a rougher appearance. The main control for this is specular roughness, which affects the entire base. At zero, this produces a completely smooth, shiny appearance with sharp highlights. When dull to one, the highlights are blurred and the surface becomes matte looking. Note that energy is conserved, so the blurred highlight is also dimmer. Another important aspect of surface roughness is anisotropy. This occurs, for example, when the surface roughness is due to scratching in a particular direction. Then, the highlight would seem to be stretched along that direction. For example, think of a vinyl record or brushed metal. This effect could be achieved using the specular anisotropy parameter, in conjunction with tangents on the geometry, supplying the stretching direction, which can be authored in your DCC of choice. So far, we have described the properties of the base substrate at the bottom of the material. On top of this base substrate sits an optional coat layer, which represents a thin layer of dielectric on top of the base. This is enabled by turning on the coat weight. Here is a wood base with no coat. When we dial the coat weight, rough wood looks like it gets a varnish. The 
coat has its own roughness and anisotropy properties independent of the base. The coat is a dielectric, so it also has its own coat IOR, which alters the strength of the reflection. Additionally, the coat can absorb light producing a tint, controlled by coat colour. Notice how the coat colour affects the base colour due to absorption. You may have noticed that adding the coat appears to darken the base. This is physically correct and happens due to light bouncing inside the coat and losing energy. Sometimes this effect is not wanted though. The coat darkening control is provided to turn off the effect. On the very top of the material, you can add an optional layer of fuzz. This is mostly used for the appearance of objects with a layer of microscopic fibres, such as for textiles or peach fuzz. The highlight is mostly around the silhouette. The fuzz weight controls the density of the fibres and the fuzz roughness controls the shape of the fibres. At high roughness, the fuzz fibres approach a more spherical shape which produces a more dusty look. Another very useful effect is thin film iridescence. This models optical interference in an extremely thin layer of transparent material on top of the base. Thus, it is tinted by the coat colour if present. The IORs of the film itself, as well as its adjacent media, affect the look of the fringes. The assumed structure is as shown here where the thin film sits on top of the base, metal or dielectric, and beneath the coat. Thin film reproduces the familiar rainbow appearance of an oily or greasy surface, as well as special cases like heated metals and soap bubbles. The thin film weight controls the overall strength of the effect by modulating the presence of the film. The thickness and IOR of the thin film alter the spacing and rainbow colours of the fringes in a physically based manner. Note that the thickness is in micrometers, so the 0 to 1 range is usually about right for the physical effect. Making the thickness higher than 1 micrometer tends to reduce the colours, which is physically correct as the interference is washed away. The surface can also be made to emit light. This can be used to simulate a glow due to heating to a high temperature, as in the case of lava or hot metal. It can also be used to model a light bulb, for example. The emission luminance controls the overall brightness of the emission. The value is in the physical unit of nits, or candela per square meter. By default, the soft maximum luminance is 1000 nits, but this can be increased for brighter objects. We can also add extra detail to the base surface with a bump or normal map. Here we apply a bump map to the base surface, adding detail which breaks up the specular highlights. There can also optionally be a separate bump map for the coat, allowing, for example, the coat to have a high resolution scratches different from the base geometry. Finally, the special case thin walled mode allows for efficient rendering of thin materials without modeling a thick mesh. This is useful for cases such as window panes, soap bubbles, sheets of paper and leaves. In thin walled mode, notice that the background doesn't get refracted, which is physically correct, but the thin wall still roughens the background. In the transmissive mode, it can be useful for cheaply rendering thin panes of glass. Notice that the background doesn't get refracted, which is physically correct but the thin wall still roughens the background. It can also be used in the subsurface mode to model diffuse transmission. For example, this can be used to model an origami paper dragon as a single-sided mesh. In this mode, the subsurface scattering and isotropy controls the amount of light bleeding. Well, that's it for this brief overview of the main features of the OpenBBR surface shader. More information can be found in the Arnold documentation, a link of which can be found in the description of this video. I hope you found this useful and have fun working with the shader. Thanks for watching and bye for now.